Hi everyone, it's Erin from the Provincial Farmhouse. In today's video, I'm doing some spring thrift flips using redesigned moulds and stamps. This video is part of the Last Thing Thrifted Spring Edition collaboration. Make sure you check out all of the other amazing creators in this collaboration. I will link them in the description. For my first project, I'm going to be giving this basket a makeover. I loved the shape and I had seen a few ideas on Pinterest that I wanted to try out. I'm going to be using Redesign's Delicate Flora Mold. I'm going to be pouring out equal parts A and B of my fast set resin and then stirring it really well for about 30 seconds. I'm then going to start pouring out my resin into the pieces that I think will work well for this project. Not exactly sure which ones I'm going to use, so I did pour out quite a few. I'm going to be attaching these castings to my basket and that's why we're using resin today. Clay, I feel, would probably just dry out and fall off. I need something that's going to be a bit stronger and last while it's attached to this basket. After about 10 minutes, my resin is set, so I'm going to start taking them out of my mold. So if I have any excess that's on the side, you can see I'm just carefully picking those bits off. If they are quite a bit thick, I can use my craft knife to get that excess off. I'm then going to add some of my Gorilla Super Glue Gel to the back of one of the designs and position it in the center. Now these are freshly cast uh, resin pieces so they are still a little bit flexible so you can see that as I'm applying them I'm able to mold them to my surface if these were older pieces I could just use my hair dryer to heat them up so you can see that whatever I'm doing on the right hand side I'm then mirroring on the left hand side I really feel that this delicate flora mold was absolutely perfect for this basket. I needed something dainty, something that was the right scale so that it didn't overwhelm the basket. And I really feel like these were perfect. But obviously, if you're going to try this at home, just whatever floral molds that you have around, I'm sure would work perfectly. Once I have all of my resin pieces glued down and the glue is dry, I'm going to take my Fusion Hotel Robe Milk Paint. I'm going to measure out a cap full and then put it in a plastic container. And then I'm going to measure out equal amounts of water to mix with it. If you want it a little bit thicker, you just go a little bit less than the amount of powder. And then I'm just going to use my paintbrush to stir it. I don't mind if I get a few lumps in my mixture. I'm then going to start applying it to the the base of my basket first. You can see I've just popped a paper towel underneath. Obviously this paint is quite a bit runny. I'm not worried about it adhering to the cane because cane is quite porous and milk paint loves to stick to that. However, on the second coat, I will be speeding up the drying process and aiming for some cracks and also some texture. I want this to look like an older basket. Right now, I'm working that milk paint over the top of our resin pieces that we've glued on, and I am loving how this is looking so far. Very shabby chic. So I'm going to continue making my way around the basket, adding that milk paint, obviously also applying it to the bottom and the handle. And I don't mind if I do have some of that cane color peeking through. Again, we're going for a bit of a shabby look here, so we don't need it to be perfect. So I'm gonna flip it over. I'm going to add it to the bottom of the basket as well. Now, obviously you could use spray paint for this or chalk paint, but I really love the old world feel that milk paint provides. On the second coat, as as I said before, I did speed up the drying process to get some cracking happening and also some texture. Once my milk paint was completely dry, I took Paint Couture's Autumn Sage Chalk Paint and I'm using a small artist brush to go in and paint over the details that are looking like leaves. Now, some of them do look a bit more like swirls and things, but we're treating them like leaves. I'm gonna go in and add that paint to each of those details. Being a spring craft, I'm obviously loving using the more pastel muted colors. Obviously you could go in a little bit darker or you could even just come in with some dark wax and just leave the color out altogether. It just depends what look you're going for. Mm -hmm. 
Once I was finished painting the leaves, I took Paint Couture's French Rose Mineral Paint and I'm going to add it to each of the little flower details. After I finished painting the flowers, I took some more of that autumn sage paint and now I'm just adding it to anywhere that I see those extra little reed details where they've wrapped it around the basket. I'm just loving the pop of the pastel color against that lovely bright milk paint. Now ordinarily, once I had finished painting and my paint was dry, I would use a wax to seal my milk paint. However, because this is a basket with lots of tiny details, I'm just going to use Rust-Oleum's Clear Matte Sealer to seal the entire basket after I have done my wet distressing here. I'm just trying to bring back a little bit of the white milk paint underneath. And here's our finished Shabby Chic basket. I love how this turned out. I feel like this basket is completely refreshed. Let me know what you think of this in the comments. For my second project, I'm going to be using these napkins that I got from TK Maxx and obviously the foam eggs that you can see off to the side there. My first step is to remove two of the sheets from the napkin. These are three ply, so that tells me I need to remove two sheets to make sure that I'm just working with one layer. So I'm just going to remove the two sheets there and then I can focus on preparing my eggs. I'm going to be using Paint Couture's Farmhouse Linen Chalk Paint and giving each of my eggs just one coat. Obviously the color that is already on there is pretty similar, but I did want to have a nice chalk paint down so that if there's any areas that the napkin isn't covering, it still looks like part of the project. When the eggs are dry, I'm going to take Paint Couture's Decoupage Medium in matte and I'm going to lay down some product on about half of my egg there and then I'm going to lay my napkin on top. Now at this point, I have not ripped the majority of the napkin away. I'm going over the top of the napkin with my paintbrush and a little bit of product on there. I'm just going to work my way around, adding more of the product to the egg and then also using my brush to smooth the napkin down. And once I have a better idea of the area that I'm going to to need, I did come in and start tearing that excess napkin away to make it a bit easier to work with it. So I'm just going to continue laying some product down on that one side and then I did flip it over, add some more product to the other half and I'm just going to work that napkin onto the surface. This is not going to be perfect and I don't want it to be. I want these to be quite shabby chic, vintage looking. So we are going to get some tears and some imperfections and probably see some of the paint underneath, but that's okay. We again, not going for perfection here. So I'm going to continue to work my way around the egg until I have the amount of napkin down that I want. Fill the little gap that's left there. I'm just going to take one of the ripped pieces of the napkin and position it over the top. Because of the type of design that we're using, you really can piece together the design on the egg without it looking too mismatched. For the other two eggs, I did decide to take a slightly different approach. I laid down some product and then you can see I'm adding some torn pieces of the napkin. I have specifically torn out pieces of that design and I'm applying it to the egg one at a time. I did feel like this was probably a more manageable way to approach it, but until you start doing a project, sometimes you don't know the best way to tackle a project. So I'm going to continue adding the paper to the egg until I have it covered to the amount that I want. Obviously, with the napkin being quite thin, this is not going to look too bad. It's not going to have a huge amount of wrinkles. Again, we're not going for perfect. 
If you wanted to take these eggs to another level, you could add some molds to them. I'm keeping them pretty simple here. We're just going to be adding the napkin, but that is an idea. Perhaps you could add some stamps. I'm definitely probably going to do some more of these sort of eggs. They're just so fun and quick and easy. Definitely a very satisfying craft. And here are our finished decoupaged eggs. This was a really fun and easy craft and I think they turned out quite sweet. Let me know what you think of these in the comments. For my last project today, I'm going to be taking this book that I thrifted and I'm actually going to be peeling off the cover. So I'm going to pull back just the colored cover so that the paper remains underneath. And I'm just going to take my time and work slowly to pull that off. Now, not all of them turn out this well. Sometimes it's just luck, but I really love the effect that this creates. Once I have the cover removed, I'm going to be using Redesign's new Easter stamp design. There are so many beautiful elements to choose from here, but I did pick this design here because I loved the frame details. So I'm just going to take my permanent black ink. I'm going to ink up the top section first, and I'm going to pull away some of the excess. We're going to be creating a border. So I'm going to position that up the top there and press down. And obviously one hand is always in place while the other moves, and then I'm going to pull it straight up. If I get any ink where I don't want it, I can wipe a little bit of it off with a baby wipe. Now I'm just going to ink up part of the border and you can see I'm pulling off the bottom section so that we can make it look a little bit more continuous. And then I'm going to line it up and press down. Now obviously it's not going to be perfect. It is going to look a little bit broken on the sides there, but that's okay. I'm just going to continue to add it and it's just going to have a vintage look and that's fine. We want this to look old and warm. Once I've added the last bit of the sides there, I'm going to ink up the top just like we did up the top of the book. I'm going to ink that up and we're going to position that down at the bottom. So when you're looking at your stamps, remember you can use bits and pieces of them to create your own designs. You do not have to use them as is. I'm then going to take another one of the stamps with this beautiful bunny and I'm going to position that in the center of our book and that is going to be the main focus of the book there. I want this to be something that could be used outside of Easter and spring, so I didn't want to add any text to make it season specific. Once I'm finished stamping, I did heat set the ink with a hairdryer, and now I'm going to take Paint Couture's Light Brown Sugar Glaze, and I'm just going to add it to the spine of the book first. Next, I'm going to add some water to a plastic container, just so I can water down a little bit of that glaze to go on the front cover as well. I just felt like it would be a bit too heavy at full strength, so water Watering it down allows me to apply it over our stamp design. It doesn't obscure it, but it does give it a lovely vintage feel. I'm also going to be applying the same watered down mix to the back of the book. If you don't have access to glaze, a watered down brown paint mix could also achieve a similar result. Once my book was completely dry, I took some twine and I'm going to wrap it around my book a few times. Now, obviously you could leave it here. You don't have to add anything else, but I wanted to add something a little bit more spring specific that could be taken off if, if whoever has this book wants to. So I'm gonna cut off the length that I want. I'm going to then grab this sweet little nest that I got online and I'm actually gonna thread the twine through the nest itself. Um, over and under so that we can hold it in place and then I'm going to tie a simple bow as well.
I'm then going to take some clay that I had lying around that had started to dry out a little bit. I've added a little bit of water to it. Now I'm rolling it up in my hands. I'm going to roll it into a little bit of a ball or an oval shape to make it look like a little egg to sit in the nest. Now I did that twice so that we had two of those eggs. I'm then going to take some of my Gorilla Super Glue Gel and I'm going to add some little dots of it into the nest. And then I'm going to take some of this forest moss that I got online. I will link it in the description. And I'm going to press that into the glue there. And then once I've done that, I'm going to add some glue to each of the eggs to stick those in place. And here's our finished spring book. I love how this turned out and I think adding that nest just gives it that something special. Let me know what you think of this in the comments. I really hope that you've enjoyed today's video and it's given you some ideas on how you can repurpose old baskets and books and how you can use napkins in your craft projects. Let me know if you had a favourite project from today. If you enjoyed today's video, I would really appreciate it if you would hit that like button, comment and share it out. And also remember this video is part of the Last Thing Thrifted Spring Collaboration. Make sure you go and check out the other wonderful creators videos. If you haven't already, I would love it if you would hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of our videos. You can find most of the products used today on our website, theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au. Thanks for watching.